cool, cool. Uh, one more Letty sound check. <laughs> now I see the audio is connected. Mm, removed. Okay, I would uh, to be uh, considerate of of everyone's time. Uh, let's just uh, start and hope also that uh, Letty can fix her audio. Or else, uh, let if you want to put some things into the chat <laughs> or live edits, live comment on the document, uh, we will be able to read read you. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, hope everyone is good. Uh, we have the community survey, the first iteration ready. Uh, Michal and Letty and Septimus in the last call actually helped put it all together. Livia also had a run through to see what is it that you're asking. And you have some comments, Livia. We should um, go through them, right? Uh, and then... Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm just opening the, the document here. Okay. And basically, the next step would be to put this really into a type form or whatever uh, you recommend. It's the best tool to keep track of answers without overloading uh, people. Mm, and then share those questions uh, far and wide. Um, yes. And at the end, maybe we can we can discuss some of the initiatives that uh, basically came together while we were sorting the questions, and uh, how to communicate those initiatives as an incentive to participate um, in the survey and yeah, reach out after that. Good. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is a good one, Libya. <laughs> So what, what has stopped you from working, investing more time in this space? Um, that's good. M Michael, uh, um, do you, can we can you help out here that we should start with some more positive assumptions, like uh, maybe they have invested time? Um, so actually, or make it an yeah. open question. Actually, in the meantime, I was looking for um, potential drop downs for, for example, uh, education or professional occupation. But I don't think we need to stick necessarily to this kind of an order. Uh, so this can go later on, or you know, like maybe even being excluded in the first first place. So I don't think that we're we're basically attached to the kind of uh, order. That's one thing, and the other one is that this question is very loaded from the very beginning uh, because it's, it's trying to test uh, like why people are not working more in this field in the sense that there is something obstructing them. Um, yeah. In a sense that, you know, like, is there not enough work? Is there not enough money? Or, you know, they need to do something else. So I agree, it's mm -hmm. not the best first question. Uh, we can just move it somewhere else. I don't know if or could we reformulate it, reframe it in a way that, for example, um, uh, how active are you in this space? And then if not, uh, what has stopped you from working, investing more time in this space? So uh, one thing, if it's positive, it's like what would make you work more? You're asking about future. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, you know, like if you ask about future, people speculate and oftentimes they mm -hmm. don't follow through. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. if we talk about activity, I would ask myself, what does it mean to be active? And I think we discussed that a little bit, or rather I was nagging everyone. What does it mean or to be active? Are you working? Mm -hmm. How about this? Are you working, investing uh, in token economy? Or how do you <laughs> token economies? Uh, yes. Uh, no. If, if not, um, the question is good because it basically um, 
engages them basically to uh, speak their mind. Like, for example, I get an, a community survey out of nowhere from token engineering. Um, and I know like people would invest way more time. <laughs> and that's where the co question comes from. That comes from people who would actually love to invest more time in this in the space, but it's hard. Uh, no resources. Um, couple of months before people weren't even asking for token engineers. Now that has slightly changed. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I, I don't think it's it's a negative assumption per se. It's just our hypothesis that uh, people would love to work more and invest more time in token engineering, but they cannot. And we would like to find out why. Uh agree and learning from experience from last week we had a lot of discussions and i might have been holding up execution why is that because if we dissect the question further are you working investing in token economies if we ask token engineers we should expect that 100 percent will say yes and if 100 yeah. percent say yes we have not learned anything um mm -hmm. so maybe you know like for the sake of it we can just uh skip the question back. for the time being uh and maybe you know like rank order some of the questions uh mm, i agree okay. you know like this is useful but <sighs> dissecting this probably won't mm. move us mm. forward so as what's fast the as we what's want. the okay what what is the what is so you know what what's bad with starting with this because it goes more like okay i you know um i don't have i uh, like I know every token engineer has no time <laughs> and would love to invest more time. And, uh, you know, and then we ask what has stopped you and they think about, okay, you know, what would really help me? Why am I not doing more if I want more uh, active, be active in token engineering? And then they think about these areas. And then the next question is, we ask what products and services would you like to see as the public good uh, of and for token engineering. So I think that's that type of question, like what is needed, what do you need? Um, and what could be this common good we're talking about uh, of token engineering that helps. And then basically- I think it's a good fair question. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. It's like the, mm -hmm. uh, it's a framing question. So it's good that we ask in the first time, are you working in this? And then we have this open-ended thing that we 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 can uh, have uh, like suggestions from them. I, I guess it's a, the very first is a very framing question. So I don't see the point of you know, deleting it because we have information from the second point, like how are you, how do you want to be involved? And that's open-ended. So it's like, we have information from that as well. Would it be helpful to perhaps ask uh, something more specific? Like, are you working in modeling um, a token economy or like something that token engineers do, but that is not as broad as token economies? Because working, investing in token economies can be um, mm -hmm. I don't know, if someone is buying a token, they might be investing in a token economy. Or if they are working on the uh, promotion of a token economy, mm -hmm. they might be working on it. So what mm -hmm. is that is specific to token engineers? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Mm, how about are you involved? Mm, it has degrees and we ask that question again later. Yes, and then we ask questions. So, okay. Okay, what, what has stopped you from working, investing more in the space? Um, is a concrete question. The only problem is it starts with an assumption that they would like to work and invest more time in the space, but they cannot. 
that's the assumptions that we're making, which, like, the answer could be nothing, and I don't need anything from token editing, or the answer is nothing, but then they think about, oh, okay, uh, there's this token engineering commons that could support me. Like this is really about them thinking uh, about their their needs as as token engineers or as aspiring token engineers or people working with token engineering. Yeah, token I think that's, that sounds better to start with a question and then if not, then have the mm -hmm. the negative. Then, then it's not an assumption anymore. It's because they're they're saying mm. if they're saying that, then we're asking. Okay, it's interesting. The the actually the the task was to have uh, assumptions, hypotheses, and let them actually validate or not those assumptions. <laughs> but but uh, I just find it personally uh, interesting. Because actually, it's good not to have assumptions and just ask questions, right? But if you have a research questions, you make assumptions and uh, let the answers validate or invalidate your assumptions. <laughs> yeah, that's probably more engaging. <laughs> mm. Okay, so it's a great research question. What has stopped you from working, investing more time in the space? And they can say, uh, nothing has stopped me. I'm fully invested. But most of them will actually, you know, hopefully open their heart <laughs> and tell uh, what's you know, why they cannot uh, invest more time in learning about token engineering or because it takes too much time in learning and then get them into the mood. So I am of the opinion uh, after this discussion that the question is good, is a good research question. It makes a negative assumption, but that's not bad. Okay. Thank you for helping out here. <laughs> okay. Okay, then basically get them into the mood of talking, um, explaining what could be better, but also think about how they could actually support token engineering comments, where they come from. Question uh, or comment, uh, past token projects I was involved with were missing knowledge from yeah, I have this crypto economics flower. Cool. Um, that's a good question indeed. Then gender, I think, was okay. Um, mm, yeah. So, are you involved in? I are you involved in token engine community? No. Please share why, especially if we can. Let's try if I can collaborate uh, with it. I didn't understand the initial question, I think. No, please yeah. share why, especially if we can help change it, like change okay. why. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Got it. So um, how can we help get more, be more involved, especially if we can help you, if we could help uh, you to be more involved, right? Uh, if we could help. My English is uh, leaving me. If we could help you. With getting more involved, I think. Mm -hmm. Is this real English? <laughs> uh, Okay. Okay, they don't have to share why for whatever reasons, but if it's just something like, okay, I have no clue where to start. Uh, uh, give me a three step how to get involved. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, 
um, process or something like that, that would be a, a, a nice answer. Token engineering design process is mature, emerging, it's trial and error. Um, mm -hmm. I make use of um, following process, following tools, tool chain process is better, clearer. Yeah. Okay. Mm, good. Okay. What's happening here? Good. Um, sorry about that. Mm, what books and perfect uh, resources have inspired you? Good question. Good question. And then, yes, then we're through, basically. How does everyone feel about it? Uh, I'm thinking and processing uh, on, a, on a few dimensions. One of them, sending it out versus trying to get it perfect. And that's always, you know, like a, uh, like a thing in my mind. The other thing is grouping that. So how can we group the questions and order them? So mm -hmm. uh, my impression about the first question being on a negative is, you know, if you start a conversation with someone, it's like, how shitty has your day been? Um, it's probably not going to elicit very positive reactions. And we are trying to get people to fill in a survey. So question is how we can start with something engaging. So they, they just spend those few minutes trying to fill that in. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure. I had those silly ideas. Just you, know, op you open a token engineering survey and someone asks you about gender, might feel a bit weird. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's why I put them into the bag. Uh, yeah, like a super silly idea. It could be, you know, something like, "What's your favorite token? What's your favorite color?" And uh, then give them, you know, like a little bit of a carrot, saying, "Say, hey, you're doing great," and then start asking actual questions. Um, I I think well, having such a like yeah research of the personas I think it's important to ask about gender and I like that it has uh non-binary male female or others because it's it's kind of like an elephant in the room that nobody talks about gender and then therefore mm -hmm. this conversation is never included so I think it's mm -hmm. good to start like statistics of like oh we only have like this yeah. percent of female or, or non-binary trans people yeah i do hello good afternoon i is good i think we have many conversations going on okay livia uh back back to you imagine you get the survey what would you expect or yeah, what would yeah, help well. you forward of that survey what would i expect from the survey yeah like so someone asks you to fill in a token engineering survey and again it might you might be biased because you're heavily involved and vested but then what would be a good opener uh, for for that that kind of survey and uh, why i'm asking because we have a few different buckets one is demographics for example gender uh, one is around work and education uh, that's another kind of demographic question and then there is a lot around token engineering and also their work experiences so for me those are at least those different three or four buckets so what would you expect first yeah, I think um, I think like the area of action would be a, a good first question. It gives it, it's demographic also, but I think this the survey it's mostly around this of like building building this persona, building like who who is the token engineer. Mm. And and then from what we were talking, Shabnan, then they would like uh, go to after you sometime. Say again, I'm sorry I didn't hear the last part. 
uh, that that this is the first survey that it's more yes, like exactly this mm -hmm. this uh, kind of starting to shape this I don't know how we call it this archetype this profession I don't know and then mm -hmm. the following one would be a little more deeper with more philosophical questions and ethical questions. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So maybe yeah, we can explain exactly. that. We have like a little paragraph in the beginning, Michal. I don't know if that addresses your question. Uh, yeah, that'd be okay. I'm just wondering, you know, like how best to move forward and what I'm mm. hearing. Yeah, we can do a tiny intro explaining what the survey is about so people just don't get surprised. And maybe mm. the first question would be the one actually above uh, what is highlighted, which is in token projects, what kind of roles did you play? And then the other one could be uh, about, you know, like their m current work or occupation, which is again split between corporate academia and so on, and being uh, being heavily or not heavily involved in token projects. I guess either either way. Um, would you like to shift this around, Michal? Mm, yeah, I'm. <clears throat> I'm open, as I said. Again, maybe I'm trying trying too hard to to make it flow super smoothly in the first iteration. No, no, I think it's it's cool. Um, just a question, but um, maybe we we put that then aside, or I don't know. We have another half hour. Uh, let me just say, okay, um, we could say, okay, this can be improved the the workaround. So I can imagine maybe yes, uh, like. What is this question? What is token engineering commons? So support me, support you. I don't understand. I'm not taking the survey. Would be sad. Uh, but at the same time, we're starting with with a you know with an explanation what this is about. That this is the first uh, of regular community surveys, and if they would like to be contacted um, and even involved in this working group Omega, which is basically. Uh, all about diversity and ethics in token engineering. So it's kind of uh, a way for us also to reach more people who might be wondering, you know, while they're creating incentive mechanisms and see the power uh, of, uh, you know, making people do things, <laughs> right? Uh, with, with tokenized incentives, uh, whether, you know, they knew, know what they're doing, uh, whether they are, uh, you know, ways to figure that out. So this is why why this whole thing started. Mm. Uh, At the sure. same time. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, quick addition. So I would expect this kind of stuff at the end, in a sense, like, you know, uh, am I willing to be conducted again? But it reminds me of a very good question at the end of the survey is, who should we send it to? Or who, who do you think we should contact with this kind of a survey? Again, as an ending question for us to, to try to broaden our reach. Ah, okay. Okay, I'm, that's good. Who should we send the survey next? Um, and we had this, this, this talk quickly. Um, if they are not feeling... Um, If they're not feeling like sharing email addresses of other people, I was like, should we just tell them to send this survey to someone next? Uh, that's that's a good point. I, I think it depends on the design and the tool. In some cases, you need to like. It's easier to send the link over email. In some cases, the links are personalized. So you might get weird results if one person sends the same link to, to different people. Um, but that's a valid point. I haven't thought about it. And people people in token or crypto spaces are usually very private. Yeah, I wouldn't send it. Uh, or I wouldn't put people's emails in, in a form. But I would might send it to people if, if people remind me. Like... Uh, Oh, okay, general category of people. I like your question, Michal, of the first, or the first question should be something of like, what area of token 
of token and engineering you're involved with and to leave the more like a negative assumption one to like maybe more to the bottom mm -hmm. okay one second i think i can sort this so this goes to the end okay and uh, possibly asking for further contact but not via email uh, then basically saying this part what has stopped you from investing more time what public goods could help uh, how commons can support you how you can support the commons that group of question goes to are you involved in token engineering community yes which channels Would that work? And with that, we have um, geography goals. I don't know. Could you? Okay. My educational background is self-taught formal. Uh, I worked with people from disciplines and past token project I was involved with, where missing knowledge from, and then. Um, yeah. And then basically here we can insert our favorite uh, flower. <laughs> have you, have you, uh, uh, did you catch that comment, uh, Livia, <laughs> uh, on, on Twitter? I think it was SM. <laughs> She goes like, yay, this is my favorite flower. <laughs> I think <laughs> with, <laughs> I think with this, uh, we, we have ourselves a branding with this flower, definitely. <laughs> okay. It's uh, okay, cool. Um, yes. <laughs> favorite flower. Insert <laughs> okay. Um, but Michael uh, and also Livia, if you feel like uh, you have a you know better organization of the questions, please do so. Um, Total noob there. Um, Twitter handle handle is public enough, no? Or or feel free. Um, or we can also, you know, um, see what tools, what the tools offer. Or just leave this question. <laughs> I want to finish this up <laughs> like everyone else. Um, How, uh, what do you think? How many people uh, in the first round we will reach with this uh, with this questionnaire? I'm guessing it will be about four to fifty people. What are your guesses? Yeah, I think fifty people sounds. It's probably gonna be like fifty people start and maybe twenty finish. Okay, cool. Does anyone offer higher <laughs> or lower? <laughs> Let's have a bet. No, no. I just wanted to get you get you guys excited as well, um, like getting the survey out and getting some some answers in, and possibly also, um, you know, creating interest uh, in in these topics that we ask about diversity and ethics and token engineering. Um, yes. I think that's that's a good, um, well, good first initiative. Um, so about the tool, uh, Livia, is this is this okay for you, or shall I find support? What do you think? Yeah, I. You mean for me to create the type form? I can do yes. that. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then basically. Uh, can you, is there a um, link that you can share and we can uh, send it 
along our contact networks who we know work in token engineering or are yeah are yeah, in yeah. one of those fields okay mm -hmm. yeah we'll have a, a shareable link okay cool okay direct network of this group and then later on so what you said, uh, what we didn't go into is really just these ethics questions and more philosophical questions. And um, now, you know, having cleared this, um, this community survey out, um, I wanted to ask uh, about people's uh, time because there is, Regis Durgedas, who wants to be involved, and also um, Jesse, uh, Jessica, we work on translating this interface to moral philosophy for token engineers into something practical. And um, those efforts can uh, be offered as an initiative or as, as things we discuss here in a more um, orderly fashion. Uh, but for them to participate, we would need to um, either have a second uh, session at a different hour later during the day, or if you all can make it uh, at a later hour, like mm, I think 9 a.m. EST was wanted or even even later for Durgadas to be able to join is uh, about 9 p.m. Um, Central European time. Would, would anyone object 9 p.m. Central European time because it's too late? Like, I'm also asking the, the few uh, community members who are part, like Letty and, and Michal. And we have a new participant with the handle Aussie Cross. Sorry, I haven't seen you. If you want to introduce yourself quickly, Aussie Cross. Hi. audio problem maybe i had server muted him before because he wasn't another oh, okay. in parallel conversation but now i am oh, muted okay. so i don't know if he intentionally joined the call okay or, okay or stumbled upon okay don't worry i just wanted to make sure that we don't uh, uh ignore anyone by mistake um yeah right. i have a comment to make regarding the uh uh, the Missing and Vision Values Initiative, I think that Livia is leading. It's very connected to these other ethical questions we want to propose to the community or at least mm -hmm. assess. And maybe we can, I don't know, uh, make some interactions with that as well. Like having yeah. that info and just making use of this uh, would be super helpful. Yes, I, I wanted to bring that up actually. Um, thanks for noticing. We have this uh, session going on on Token Log for submitting the mission, vision, and values. And this is a really um, exciting, amazing time because this was the first thing we did six months ago uh, in the beginning of the cultural build. And we had um, very interesting inputs and we had a, an initial um, a collection of statements, but then now it's been so, so much that changed and so many uh, new contributors joined and we're doing the Hatcher outreach. So there are a lot of people that are um, like Hatchers of the TEC that uh, would be great to have their input. And you guys um, are most welcome and it would be very valuable to have your, your proposals. It's super easy. Um, I'll share the link in the um, uh, in, in the Omega chat. Mm -hmm. 
and we're going to have three weeks to to no two weeks to iterate on them. So on Tuesday the thirteenth is the last day that we're going to count the votes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Curious because I see these people like very interested in filling this up, and we have these other questions about how actually is the diversity in the in this group. So maybe it's like uh, very good to iterate on, on that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, mm -hmm. Libya, uh, about the mission, vision, and and values. How how is the token log, or like, are people going to just propose statements, or are they going to? question the statements that uh, are made in the first uh, move of the cultural build? Yeah, so um, I made a, a forum post that has the mm -hmm. previous statements. Yeah. So if people want to copy and paste them and uh, change, use that as a base to, to build a new statement, they can do that. Um, and there's also a template. So when you enter token log and you click on new issue, you mm -hmm. uh, a template will pop up and then you basically just have to answer those three questions. So either mm -hmm. using or not the previous statements is possible. So all of these proposals will be there. And then people who have um, impact hour tokens and a C stack score will have mm -hmm. a third token for token log to be able to vote. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so anyone who is a trusted seed member and has been contributing to the cultural build will be able to vote. Mm -hmm. And proposals can be forked as well. So if you see one that you that you like a lot and you just want to change a little bit, you can reference that first proposal and mm -hmm. um, and build uh, on it. Mm -hmm. But that would be individual anyways, because it is uh, token weighted, basically, like, it's like token curating this list, right? Yeah. Griff, do you want to say a little bit more about that part? of Sure. Yeah, it's, um, you know, the, the impact hours and the C-Stack score. They both have tokens underneath them. And uh, for this vote and for the votes for the future votes, the scores get 50% um, of the voting power goes to people with C-Stack tokens and 50% of the voting power goes to people with impact hours. So Sebnem, you're like a whale, actually. You have a lot of voting power. <laughs> um, and so you can uh, go in there and you can uh, vote quadratically. So like... Let's say that you have uh, 25 voting power tokens that are calculated by your uh, C-Stack score and impact hours. So if you had 25 of them and you voted on uh, 25 different proposals, each one would get one vote. But if you put uh, 16 behind one proposal, proposal A, and you put uh, nine behind proposal B, then proposal A would get the square root of 16, just four votes. And proposal B would get the square root of uh, nine, which is three votes. So even though you had 25 voting power tokens, you're only getting counted for seven votes. Mm -hmm. And if you put all 25 votes behind one proposal, you would have the power of five votes. So this is the, we're using, it's, it's kind of a complicated thing in the back end, like how the votes are calculated, but it's really easy to use. You just go and you look at the different issues and you can vote on um, on the ones that you like. You don't have to know how it's working. You just hit plus, and it it will aggregate the. It'll do all the math for you. You know. <laughs> okay, Letty. Yeah, I think that can be very useful, like to have this uh, quantitative uh, rating of the proposal, so we can just make assumptions about what the community really care about in terms of well ethical issues. Because I guess 
there's going to be proposals about everything within the community. So maybe we have the survey as this first point of contact with people. And then we use these, uh, these forks or these proposals as we are, as, as our input to have, uh, like a, a road ahead. So we can use this in, in a qualitative mm -hmm. fashion as well. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to make another survey for this, so because this is going to be yeah, organic, yeah, yeah. people are going to propose, so we mm -hmm. can use that qualitatively as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and we it'd should be really also great. mention that in the survey, maybe, right? Yeah, yeah. we can add the, the, the link to this at the end of the survey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, be, and, and say and we are going to do this. Mm -hmm. It would be really amazing if, if you all would propose uh, a, a version yourselves too. Uh, starting off with a really strong, ethically-minded approach uh, will set the scene for everybody going forward. Right now, we only have like five or six proposals, so this is a good opportunity to be influential and, and move, move, move the thought. So I'm, I'm always so overwhelmed like with all of these things. <laughs> that needs to be done to get to, to a point, but um, like... Uh, I'm just going to take Michael as an example, <laughs> but I have the same issues. For example, Michael, I think he, he must have gotten himself a, a lot of praise until now, but he's never there to, to pick it up. <laughs> and I don't know if you are a trusted seed. So one needs to be trusted seed, so applied and taken as trusted seed. Yes, because right. we need their address. So we yeah. can't give them tokens without the address. So they have to apply to the trusted mm -hmm. seed. They don't have to pay membership dues for this for this phase. Mm -hmm. Eventually there's also joining the for for joining the TE Commons, we'll have another barrier of entry, which is you have to join the Legal Swiss Association. Mm -hmm. But right mm -hmm. now, and that's what really joining the trusted seed means is like you've gone through the last step, which is actually joining our legal association. Mm -hmm. Which you can do for free if you apply for a scholarship. We'll happily pay for the membership dues. Um, that being said, we for it to work, you have to apply to the trusted seed, and we have to be able to connect any praise that you've earned to uh, mm -hmm. to your address. Okay, I'm thinking also like a lot of those token engineering community members who you know, are super uh, helpful, thankful, and, and appear to things if, you know, if they think they can, uh, you know, make use of or it's, it's important for their work, like more practically minded, but uh, time poor token engineers uh, or potential token engineers. How does their vote count if they're not part of the trusted seed? Like they don't have a vote. Or they don't have a stake, right? Uh, they can easily become part of the trusted seed by applying okay. for a scholarship, and then uh, mm -hmm. we give them 450 die, and then they get a thousand C stack tokens just like that. But also, <laughs> there there is there is a there is a social cr uh, factor as well. You know, mm -hmm. if they mm -hmm. really want to help us push this forward, and they say they make a they comment. Will. Like it mm -hmm. will say something. That being said, we've had about 500 people apply to the trusted seed over cool. the last two years, and we've collected a lot. I, I would, <laughs> I would, I would say that there are, of course, there are token engineers that we don't have in there, but mm -hmm. you think you'd be surprised? We pretty much, we did it. We we, we did a pretty good job getting people. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's super cool. I'm just thinking maybe like maybe they don't realize, but. This is now really moving ahead, and now is you know the time to make time to actually you know get involved, be involved because uh, we are building this commons, which is going to produce you know public goods, open source, reusable, and hopefully useful things, right? So they should be in here, <laughs> and and actually you know not just. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's use the community survey to to point that out as well. <laughs> it's a good one, right? So that's good. That's good. Thanks for bringing this up, making the connections. Okay. Um, noted. So this document. Can... 
-hmm. is ready. We just need to add these few things and then... Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Hmm. So would you like to add that as well, uh, Livia? Yeah. Since, you know, so when, when you put it... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll call for the trusted seed, uh, yes. the link to the mission, vision, and values, and and that's it. Yeah, exactly. And mm. like, if I'm just trying to find out uh, if they're really, you know, uh, off sync, and now they realize, okay, uh, I was missing so many things. I want in. Do they exactly know what to do? Like, apply to trusted seed, get your XDI, share your address. Uh, do we have a step-by-step? -step? I can also look for it. Can there is a um, walkthrough video for joining the trusted seed? We can put a link as well in the email. It's very easy. It's just um, filling a form. So when they click the link, they will already go to the form. And it's very, yeah. Good. Just Perfect. Point. Perfect. So let's let's add that and then uh, see what questions come up. Cool. Okay. Uh, three more minutes. So I will try and shift the hours so these two other uh, working group members uh, can join and we actually uh, work out. Um, um, Make this a bit more practical, like what does it mean working in these diverse background, uh, working with people with diverse backgrounds, uh, how can we make that uh, practical? And the other part is this whole ethical engineering. Um, again, I give myself as an example always. If you come from software engineering, like you haven't heard uh, a tiny thing about uh, ethical engineering and now is the time uh, with token engineering you have to start and we have uh, these great insights and again jessica is hopefully going to help make that more practical more accessible uh, and it would be great if we can use these uh, bi-weekly sessions to actually churn out uh, and and give feedback to materials that these people uh, can uh, or want to provide as as part of this working group. Yeah, if, yeah and then basically if, if anyone cannot make later times, uh, do reach out. I, I really, you know, this, this group, um, I would like to keep it. Maybe we can then have two, um, two sessions with different time zones uh, or shifted times, um, that could be also an option. Like if anyone of you says, oh, please don't shift, don't move anything. Otherwise I will not be able to participate. I would uh, really um, love to take that into account and we will just have two different time sessions to, um, yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. So, Livia, we're sending out the survey, correct? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to finish it today. I think we can use a uh, contact type form, Griff. Is that okay? Okay, I'll... I'll Absolutely. I'll Sorry, okay. it took me a second to unmute. Absolutely. Fantastic. Okay, great. So, I can start it today. Exciting. Thank you, everyone. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And, Thanks, everyone. Uh,